Hi guys, remember something, people who work hard and just have that raw work ethic with some discipline will beat the daydreamer who has a lot of idealism. But when an idealist actually works hard and has work ethic and has discipline, it's game over for the simple hard workers who have no original thought or vision. That today is the basic difference between the South Indian industry, mainly Kannada industry and the Telugu industry to a lot of extent and versus Bollywood or Bengal's Tollywood. Because if someone asked Hombali films, an equivalent of Hombali films in Bollywood or Tollywood to do this, uh, do a song like this, the producers or the directors approaching the composers, every, every between everyone, the conversation would go like this: that hey, there's a song we we want to do for a random statue that is coming up. Uh, see, I'll give you twelve hours or so, make a song. And if the composer had said that, okay, what is the vision behind the song? What is your idea? What are your thoughts? They would say, ah, screw that. I have twelve hours. Give me a song. Hi guys, today I will get into the arrangement analysis of the song that Hombali Films brought out in order for their audiovisual promo for the unveiling of the Statue of Prosperity, the statue of Nada Prabhu Kempe Gowda for their Bangalore airport. And I'll also get into some of the socio-cultural impact and repercussions that I think this incident brings out, and the credit that Hombali Films deserves. First, let us check out who this man was. Well, among many things, he was a chief ten under the Great Vijayanagar Empire, and he was also the founder of the Bengaluru city. Now, here's something that caught my eye for the most part in his Wikipedia page. So, see here, Kempe Gowda was a patron of arts and learning. Okay. But in spite of belonging to a purely Kannada-speaking community, he was a polyglot, meaning he knew multiple languages. He authored Ganga Gauri uh, Vilasa, a Yakshagana play in Telugu, the court language of the time. This is so amazing. And also, this brings me to one of the core ideas that we'll get that I'll get to in this in this video. That is, see the word Ganga Gauri Vilasa. This is easily a Bengali word. Anyone in anyone who knows some Bengali can understand the meaning of this word. Ganga Gauri Vilasa, we would pronounce it as Ganga Gauri Bilash, and that is my point here because this statue is called Pragatiya Pratime, which means uh, a statue of prosperity. Which in Bengali we would ex use exact these two words. We would call it Pragatir Pratima. Okay, that is my point. That see, I'm just some guy sitting in Bengal, and I can understand the words used by some distant state inside the country, and people say there was no India before 1947. You know, we can't have any unifying language and things like that. Or if at all we need any unifying language, it has to be English for some reason. Now, I will always be opposed to the idea of Hindi being our national language or state language or the lingua franca, because my fr main argument is that Hindi is not essentially our language. Hindi is a very jumbled up and hodgepodge of Urdu, Farsi, Arabic, and a bit of Sanskrit, hardly any. Which is why. uh you will understand you'll notice that the parents our parents generation from bengal have a hard time understanding uh, hindi uh that is especially our grandparents generation they can't understand what they are saying in hindi and they are so bad at uh, speaking hindi which is why you see bengali is being made fun of in hindi movies and this is also why south india as a whole rejects hindi uh, a lot because they also have tough time understanding this language because Uh, see south india did not face much of islamic occupation or invasions and definitely not much of prolonged islamic uh, rules which is why they did not get familiarized with urdu words and that is it's no wonder when you hear someone reading out the urdu news in doordarshan or hearing a pakistani guy saying urdu you feel like it's exactly hindi there's nothing you can't understand except maybe one or two words so you see the hindi we speak is absolutely not an indian language and why do i make a fuss about it why not hindi why not english because language grammar figure of speech allegory the way we discuss topics everything and it describes how we think about the world and things and the society okay that is called epistemically reclaiming your language you need to have your episteme your culture in your language and we always have that but when your language changes and the way you speak your language changes because of other outs outside outsider languages then your thinking also changes see some examples one very good example is artha do you think it means meaning or wealth so we are apparently a culture who exchanges the word artha for uh, both both the word meaning and wealth 
can you believe how significant that is how much research do you think there is about this so a so called poor country uses the same word for wealth and meaning what if pursuit of wealth is meaning or what if pursuit of meaning is your wealth have have we even been able to think about these things then another example is the word himsa or hingsha in bengali so uh, if you if you are if you know some hindi or sanskrit or uh, maybe sanskrit you'll understand that hingshatmak tarika and all hingsha means violence in hindi but in bengali hingsha means jealousy okay so we conveniently interchange the concept of jealousy and violence in indian languages in 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 indian epistem isn't that interesting so do we then as a as a society look upon jealousy as violence that would be so amazing so we can't have these discussions if we keep on speaking in english or urdu or arabic or farsi so we need a common language and that has to be sanskrit and i'm starting a hashtag and i'll use it for any video that i make on this topic it will be revive sanskrit and i think it's time that we we seriously look upon sanskrit as a unifying language for the entire country because everyone knows some sanskrit by default anyone who is an indian because of their state language their state's language will have some influences of sanskrit in them maybe not so much northeast states because that's because they have been so so much hijacked by uh, english speaking missionaries but maybe we can reclaim that as well and that brings me to how the kannada industry and uh, karnataka in general is is in many ways leading the charge at least in the soft power department of this hindu civilizational reawakening can you believe what an insane thing hombali films has done when i saw the video first I saw a notification that Hombali Films has released a video called Glimpse of Statue of Prosperity now the Prabhu Kempegowda statue at Bengaluru's Kempegowda airport. I have never been to Bengaluru so I didn't know that their airport is called Kempegowda airport but when I started listening to the song I thought okay they are doing a promotion of their airport that's pretty interesting and then maybe just uh, they use some song from KGF because it the song song kind of sounded like a KGF song and then i saw that ravi basrood has done the music so ravi basrood is of course famous for kgf in the rest of india so i thought maybe they use some kgf song and when i then when i'm listening to the song i hear the word kempegowda many times then i realized what they made a song just for this video and why is that important have you ever i i have never heard in my life a local private production company doing an audio visual promo for something that they are not invested in financially they are doing this homely films is doing this just for the promotion of their cultural identity they are showing it to the world see see our man see he is being glorified in our airport and we'll make a song just just to glorify it this is an unbelievable thing and not only do they have no financial incentive other than the money they are going to get from the views of this it's not like the government paid them to do this it's this is not a government sanctioned project nor is it from from any movie maybe they will make a movie on kempegowda in the future that's why they have made a song now but we don't even know that that such a project is happening or not at least i don't even if they use the song later in a kempegowda movie that's that's fine that's fine with me but i have never seen i can't even imagine a bengali or bollywood industry uh, produce production house doing this for a for a government project it's just because they are so in line with the government and their cultural identity it's like this that's why hombali films has done this and now let me tell you why i am even more jealous of karnataka and the kannada industry at the moment if at all any industry or any director had approached me with this in the scenes i work with they would probably tell me just make a song we are there's this project coming we want to get into the good books of the local politicians make a song uh, they'll contact me in the evening and say the, tomorrow morning give me a song make how much uh, you can in the in those 12 or 14 hours and uh, there's no budget for additional musicians do everything on the keyboard arrange a song and we'll get some vocalist we'll finish it in two days entire project is in two days so i thought maybe this was even done that way then i checked the credits and what see the amount of people involved in this song this is <laughs> this is insane see so the composition has been done by ravi basrood music producers meaning the people who have arranged and uh, done the music programming ravi basrood bharat madhusudanan and sachin basrood and is basrood a common surname in karnataka or, or, or all the all these basrood related to each other i don't know so then there's a trumpet group not not played with midi keyboards robin fergos and group then drums played live not the actual uh, western drums that you hear the eastern sounding folkish drums that you hear those are played by actual human beings vetri and g bharat then guitar and bass is played by a woman called vagu mazan 
then ethnic strings played by mahboob subani then the sitar in the intro is played by mahesh prasad l and then see so many singers it's a core it's a gigantic powerful chorus song chorus voice oriented song and so they actually hired so many people sachin basrur santosh bhenki uh, manish dinakar krishna basrur four guys already four people already then chetan handattu naga prakash kota vijay basrur umesh karkada krishnamurthi basrur nandu j kgf ramakrishna basrur so that's about 11 people they hired 11 people just for the vocals this is this is okay then there's a mixing mixing engineer mixing and mastering engineer kishor hyderabad and ravi basrur and the studio it was done was in ravi basrur's uh, studio so see so many people involved in just one production where there is no no direct incentive or commission for hombali films for doing this just the views and this the views even isn't even too much so it's been a lot of days they released it on november 11 and there's been just about under half a million views i expected much more views for this song because the song is so insane and for a statue that they are invested in just culturally and mentally there's no direct financial ins- i'm repeating myself but i can't believe this thing happened so revive sanskrit and let's get on with all all let's let's think this way for all of india great job humble films okay now let's let's get into the song okay firstly a lot of things are going on firstly uh, the the thing that i'm obsessed about a rise has already happened and this rise has come with some whoosh sounds and some pick up of some percussion something of that sort happened okay see let's listen to this a little in slow motion because this is a beautiful song this deserves a uh, high analysis Hmm. And then the sitar comes in. Sitar is played with a lot of synthesizers. And there's a trance techno layer going on. That thing is going on along with the sitar. But lush, deep, thick, rich tones. is going on uh, holding the sa note in those synthesizers but the sitar is taking a, uh, a lot of other notes okay and all the choirs have come in obviously with the sitar so the sitar and all those people all those 7 or 11 people that we discussed are singing the exact same melody uh-huh. and the beautiful image of uh, the late punit rajkumar comes in here and there's another thing, another thing to discuss here remember i had discussed in the sojugada uh, sujumallige song uh, analysis that uh, in as indians we generally like generally like any song that is done in the 7 by 8 uh, time signature that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 even sojugada is in that beat uh, sojugada sujumallige this song is also in that beat so inherently we somehow we somehow have a genetic predisposition to like any song that is in 7 by 8 maybe because our ancestors are used to listening to songs in this groove and this song does an insanely great job of executing a 7 by 8 beat but with insane bit of um, raw power okay that's a guitar brush that's going on that's a guitar drag with with the hands in a distortion guitar nagara nirmatru obara vishwada ati attarada pratime pragatiya pratime statue of prosperity oh i'm sorry that's not a guitar drag that sounds like exactly that but it's that's actually done in a trumpet or those uh, i don't know what it's called it's the indian bugle sort of a thing that you that you do before a war is starting or someone important is coming in a king or someone nagara nirmatru obara vishwada ati attarada pratime pragatiya pratime statue of prosperity so many things to discuss so firstly the beat is the bass drum is going on playing the 7 by 8 ati attarada pratime pragatiya pratime statue of prosperity 1234567123456712345671234567121234567 okay my vocal is a bit delayed behind the song because of the obs i'm using but i hope i don't sound too irritating and see so much power in the vocals that's that's raw masculine power and the vocals are are panned all around your head okay it feels like 
you are sitting and listening to a musical performance live in front of your eyes and people are surrounding you all the musicians pragatiya pratime statue of prosperity that that uh, trumpet kind of uh, indian folk instrument that does the pick up for the for the chorus for the tight heavy groove that we get into see that gives a sort of a rise and then we go into the groove and the synthesizer are playing all the they are locking with the bass drums yeah there's a bit of distortion guitar rhythms as well that's playing look at the power of those chorus vocals and how much they are shouting at the top of their voice that's very high volume recording they have given it all they have given 100% everyone in the vocals suddenly some synthesizers come in and do a little bit of panning okay they come from the right ear and then go to the left ear and disappear yeah they doing this there's a lot of uh, synth uh, tones that come in they just increase the uh, heighten the urgency of the song a bit for the begin from the beginning you were kind of getting into the groove now they are again increasing your urgency there okay no 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 keep your energy up The statue is also extremely beautiful. We have to discuss that. Oh, the, now the strings have come in. Strings and some brass section horns have uh, hit with the chorus. Okay there's one thing you will hear only if you are listening in some high end uh, speakers or headphones you won't be able to hear this in a phone loudspeaker or a laptop loudspeaker that is uh, strings are playing a very fast and beautiful melody line okay parallelly with the vocals Now the sitar comes in the sitar was gone for a while and the brass sections those horns etc they are playing the melody as well along with the bass drum and vocals sitar oh i forgot to mention the indian percussions have come in those are being played in some south indian percussions there's a bit of tambourine as well ghungruish sounding tambourine so many vocals uh -huh. so much manpower has gone into this so many people are singing see the power i don't know who this man is every time they are they are pronouncing the word kempe gowda all their pride and their fierce patriotism patriotism is for the nation but at least for their culture is coming out in full force otherwise it can't happen you can't give someone some bunch of cash and ask them to sing at the top of their voice this this won't work they have to feel what they're singing ye pragati apratime statue of prosperity it ends with a bomb blast apparently <laughs> that's a blast sort of a sound so insane work humble films and thank you for showing the way to other production houses how to go about promoting your own culture yeah.